treatment? No, I wish that were the case, but uh, sadly it's the opposite. I mean, with the greatest respect to Stephen, I haven't watched such nonsense on British television in a, a long, long time. Uh, Islam doesn't get special treatment. Uh, we're not soft on Islam. In fact, the opposite is true. In fact, we're relentlessly negative about uh, and full of stereotype towards Islam and Muslims. You can now say things about Islam and Muslims that you would never say about any what other sort of faith or minority group. Well, let's take one example recently. Last week, the Daily Express on Saturday morning led with the headline, Muslim plot to kill the Pope. Can you imagine a headline which said Jewish plot to kill the Pope if four people had been arrested and we weren't even sure whether they were guilty, whether they were Muslims, etc., etc. In fact, all six people were released without charge on the Monday and the Express put a tiny paragraph on page nine saying they were released without charge. But they led on Saturday morning with Muslim plot. I, all of us, all two million of us, were planning to kill the Pope, it seems, according to the Daily Express. And look, Mr. Green is someone who, if you go on the Christian Voice website, refers to Islam as a counterfeit religion, a satanic faith, and he says that Muslims can only go to heaven if we become jihadists. I'm going to I can't, no, I need to finish this point. I can't imagine the BBC giving, say, Anjum Chowdhury two minutes to talk about Judaism uh, and rant about how Britain is soft on the Jews and yet we find ourselves able to even have these discussions well, who knows? and Maybe make that these never read any history as, just as you've never read the Quran. Let's look across the continent. You didn't just talk about Britain in your film. You talked about Christian countries. Let's look across the continent at this aggressive expanding Islam. We have the rise of the far right as recently as Sweden where a party in Sweden which had never done well did well on an anti-Islamic platform. We have Switzerland where minarets have been banned. We have France where burqas have been banned. In Belgium, Belgium, where they have no government. The Parliament spent four months debating a van, ban on the faith veil. That's what they saw as their priority. Bel and Bell, you mentioned the terrorism threat. This has nothing to do with terrorism. This is a cultural no, problem, a paranoia no, about Muslims what, in our midst that has nothing to, to do with security. You, uh, yes, it is to as I said, what's said publicly already, which is not said about any other group. You look at some of the headlines, people are not afraid to be critical. To respond to Bell's specific point very quickly, people have always been afraid of strangers in their midst, of the other. You go back a hundred years and you look at the Evening Standard headlines about the smells which the foreign Jews bring to London. You look at the treatment of the Irish in the 70s and 80s. You look at black immigrants when they came. There's always going to be an, uh, an other. And today, Muslims make up a very okay. large minority and, and are seen with and fearful and eyes and, and whipped, up, whipped up by people like Stephen and who are rather ignorant about us. But you can continue that debate on our website and I'm sure you will. bbc.co.uk forward slash Sunday Morning Live. Specific point very quickly. People have always been afraid of strangers in their midst, of the other. You go back a hundred years and you look at the Evening Standard headlines about the smells which the foreign Jews bring to London. You look at the treatment of the Irish in the 70s and 80s. You look at black immigrants when they came. There's always going to be an, uh, an other. And today, Muslims make up a very okay. large minority and, and are seen with and fearful eyes and, and, and whipped, up, whipped up.